The much delayed moment that space fanatics have breathlessly anticipated may finally arrive next week. I am talking, of course, about the Starship Orbital Launch Test, the world's most powerful rocket, which can fire up to around 17 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, will briefly take a lap around the Earth. This test could make history. That is, if it all works out, Starship could become the world's most powerful operational rocket. Its capability is certainly going to enable missions throughout this galaxy in the future. And indeed, SpaceX's new Starship lunar rover was revealed ahead of the first orbital launch. All this and more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. But first, I want to take a moment to express my deepest gratitude for your continuous and unwavering support, especially during the past few days. Thanks to all of you, the number of subscribers to our channel has grown rapidly, and we are getting so much closer to reaching that 100k milestone. So, as SpaceX gears up for the next Starship launch, I wholeheartedly encourage those who haven't already subscribed to our channel to do so now, or at your earliest convenience. Our mission, first and foremost, has always been, and will always be, bringing you the latest and most up-to-date news on SpaceX, as well as other interesting updates from the field of aerospace. So, let's keep up that momentum as we embark on the next exciting chapter of space exploration. Once again, all of us here at Great SpaceX, thank you so much. Now, without further ado, let's begin today's episode. <clears throat> As planned, SpaceX will stack the Starship back on top of Super Heavy Booster before the launch countdown. The fully stacked vehicle stands 120 meters tall, larger than any rocket in history. Meanwhile, a cluster of 33 methane-fueled Raptor engines, each generating about a half a million pounds of thrust, will power the rocket off the pad for its inaugural test flight. Six Raptor engines are also mounted to the Starship upper stage. Those engines will accelerate Starship to near-orbital velocity, and the vehicle will coast around the world before falling back through the atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean, eventually impacting north of Hawaii. The earliest the Starship flight test could take off is early Monday, with a launch window opening around 7 a.m. CDT, but the actual launch date will depend on multiple factors, including technical readiness, weather conditions, and perhaps most apparent, the FAA's approval of a commercial launch license. Sources characterized the discussions regarding the launch license as a back-and-forth dialogue between the FAA and SpaceX, which must satisfy the FAA that it is complying with federal standards for environmental protection and public safety. But more notably, if all proceeds according to plan during the test flight, aerospace startup Astrolab announced a deal with SpaceX to send a robotic version of its transport transport vehicle to the lunar surface and help deploy other companies' payloads. Astrolab Incorporated, the tiny startup that is building the rover, chose the biggest ride possible, Starship. This is SpaceX's first commercial cargo contract to the lunar surface, Jared Matthews, founder and chief executive of Astrolab, said. In actuality, Mr. Matthews, who is an engineer that previously worked at SpaceX and NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, founded Astrolab less than four years ago. Located a stone's throw away from SpaceX's headquarters in Hawthorne, California, it has about 20 full-time employees, he said. Although the Soviet Union in the 1970s, and more recently China, have landed robotic rovers on the moon, the United States has yet to send any. Next year, NASA is sending its Volatiles Investigating Polar Exploration Rover, or Viper, which is to search for water ice in the lunar south polar region. That is the area that astronauts will explore in the coming years as part of NASA's Artemis program. By contrast, Astrolab's moon trip is, at least for now, an entirely commercial venture with no financing from NASA. Matthews declined to say how much it would cost to get Flex to the moon or how much money Astrolab has raised. He said Astrolab would make money by lifting and deploying cargo for customers on the lunar surface. That could include scientific instruments, and perhaps in the future, the rover could help build lunar infrastructure. Essentially, providing what I like to call last-mile mobility on the moon, Mr. Matthews said. 
You can kind of think of it like being UPS for the moon. And in this analogy, Starship is the container ship crossing the ocean, and we're the local distribution solution. A robotic arm on the rover can help set up the payload on the surface. The mass of the rover and all of the cargo will be more than two metric tons. The Flex rover is a bit larger than NASA's Perseverance rover on Mars and much faster with a top speed of 15 miles per hour. It's undeniably a far cry from the rather Spartan looking lunar buggies driven by astronauts during the Apollo days. Last year, the company showed off a full scale prototype, testing it out near Death Valley deep in the California desert. Canadian astronaut legend Chris Hadfield took the rover for a stroll as well, advising the company on the vehicle's design. While the prototype had to be built far more more robustly to make up for Earth's gravity, the company is aiming to slim the final design down to just 1,100 pounds. The company has some great ambitions for it as well. We want to be the UPS, FedEx, and the Uber of the moon. That appears to be part of the expanding potential market for Starship. SpaceX plans to use it for launching its second generation of Starlink Internet Communications satellites. Two flights that are to go past the moon, but not land, have already been chartered by wealthy space tourists. For NASA, Starship is how its astronauts will land on the moon during the Artemis III mission, currently scheduled for 2025. Before that, SpaceX is to conduct an uncrewed flight to demonstrate the capability of the spacecraft to get to the moon and set down there in one piece. If those schedules hold, the commercial cargo mission with the Astrolab rover could take place next year. Regardless, Starship still must be launched into the sky first. Meanwhile, Falcon Heavy just completed a test firing of 27 main engines, clearing a hurdle before installing three commercial communications satellites on the launcher for a mission to geostationary orbit next week. The test firing at 12 p.m. EDT Thursday lasted less than 10 seconds, enough time for the Falcon Heavy rocket's 27 Merlin 1D main engines to ignite and throttle up, generating some 5.1 million pounds of thrust. Hydraulic hold-down clamps kept the 3.1 million pound launcher firmly on the ground at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. Working out of a firing room leased in NASA's Launch Control Center, SpaceX's launch team supervised a 50-minute automated countdown sequence to load kerosene and liquid oxygen propellants into the Falcon Heavy. Control of the countdown passed from a ground computer to the rocket's flight computer at T-1 minute. The propellant tanks were pressurized and the engines lit moments before the clock reached zero. SpaceX completed the static fire test without the Falcon Heavy's payload fairing or the three satellites the rocket will haul into an orbit near geostationary altitude some 22,000 miles or 36,000 kilometers over the equator. Ground crews will lower the rocket horizontally Friday and roll it back to the hangar a quarter mile south of Pad 39A. The payload compartment will be installed on the rocket inside the hangar this weekend. Then the rocket will be returned to Pad 39A and raised vertically for a launch attempt. Following the static fire test Thursday, SpaceX confirmed the mission remains on track for liftoff during a 57-minute launch window Tuesday opening at 7.29 p.m. EDT. The launch will mark the sixth flight of a Falcon Heavy rocket overall and the second of as many as five Falcon Heavy missions on SpaceX's schedule this year. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll be seeing you next time.